Now, there's a real interesting story taking place um, about a, uh, a company based here in Utah that makes safes. As a matter of fact, they're America's leading manufacturer of firearm safe. Well, apparently, social media is promising to give them the uh, Bud Light treatment after it was learned that um, the company posted to X, formerly Twitter, admitting that it had allowed federal authorities to access a customer's safe. And a lot of people are very upset with this. Let's dig into this story a little bit more. Joining us on our newsmaker line right now is Victoria Churchill. She is a writer, editor at American Liberty News, the Republic Standard. Victoria, welcome to the Robert Catch Show, and thanks for joining us tonight, Victoria. Thank you so much for having me. Great to be with you this evening. Victoria, dig into this story a little bit more and give us some of the background on this story for people who don't know what happened here. Yes, yeah, so as you mentioned, Liberty Safe is America's largest manufacturer of firearm safe. And they have definitely been getting some heat on social media this week because they admitted, as you said, that they granted federal agencies, uh, specifically the FBI, access to a customer's safe, um, which is something that they are not supposed to do. Uh, actually, on their own website, they say that if a customer has an issue where they can't get into their safe, It advises them to call their local locksmith because allegedly the company can't do anything and they can't give them that access. However, when it came to federal agencies, they did, in fact, uh, give them that access. And so I think that was part of the reason why so many people in the gun community see this as a shock, because as you mentioned, this is the largest gun safe manufacturer. Um, So there's quite a bit of people that, you know, are customers and are affected by this. But again, I think the gun community at large is really kind of raising their eyebrows, right? Like we talk a lot about red flags. This yeah, is definitely yeah. a red flag for us. <laughs> it sure uh, is. Seeing, Victoria, seeing this why, come up. Yeah. Why were they given access to this? I mean, why was it so critical to give access to the FBI into this individual safe? Well, that's the thing is that nobody can figure out why. So the FBI had obtained a permit to be on this person's property, um, you know, had obtained the warrant, but... Um, kind of, again, the the big question here is, obviously, they had access to the property, but does that mean that they can just go around willy-nilly, you know, reach in their fed hands into every little nook and cranny of this individual's property? And the consensus really seems to be that, um, no, they did not have that authority. Uh, and, you know, Liberty Safe, so kind of originally when this came up on social media, there was a viral video that had been going around um, of the raid. Uh, the, the individual in question, um, he is a January 6th, allegedly is kind of tied in with that whole debacle that's going on. Um, but I think kind of regardless of how you feel about that, we obviously still care a lot about an individual's right to due process. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I think some people are definitely very concerned with how this was handled. Um, and, you know, for now, they are the largest manufacturer of gun safes. But I don't know how much longer that's going to remain to be the case with all of the heat that they're taking this week. And uh, they've actually issued kind of a correction saying that they're going to be editing their policies so that nothing like this happens in the future. But from what I'm seeing, folks aren't really buying it. Victoria, I was told by a good friend who's well connected to uh, this issue. He told me uh, Liberty Safe is not the only safe making company that does this, that other companies out there do this as well. Have you heard anything about that? Well, so so that is kind of an interesting point that you bring up because, uh, for example, I have seen one company on social media, the specific one is, uh, I believe, Safety um, Inc. I mentioned them in the bottom of my article. They're based out of New York area, northern New York, and they actually kind of came out not necessarily mentioning Liberty Safe by name, but saying that to them this does not seem to be protocol and that their customers uh, are not going to get treated this way. Um, and so, you know, I think, uh, like I mentioned before, I think Liberty Safe might be dethroned from their position uh, in terms of sales and manufacturing, which, you know, is a little bit upsetting to see because this is a company that pledges to be for freedom and patriotism and just American values that a lot of gun owners look for, right, when they are making purchases. And, you know, unlike Bud Light, that this has kind of all been tied into, this isn't a purchase that people are going out and making every single weekend. These saves cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, and so this is a significant investment that somebody is making in this company. Um, and I saw 
on the reply to kind of the original statement that the company put out on Wednesday, one person was saying, you know, hey, I spent $7,000 with you guys a couple of weeks ago, and I'm going to return my safe. I don't yeah. want to give you another dime. Wow. And uh, that seems to be a consensus that, you know, I think, again, I think is going to end up being pretty bad for Liberty Safe, but pretty good for some of their competitors. Um, so that New York company is one uh, Fort Knox safe. I know is another pretty prominent one. So I think, uh, well, Liberty Safe might see the hit to their bottom line. Some of these other companies, I think, might be seeing a boost in the next couple months. Victoria, how ugly is the pushback on, on social media right now for Liberty Saves? How ugly is it? Well, so here's the thing is that something that I've personally seen is, you know, a lot of memes because that is just what we see a lot of on social media. But as I kind of touched on before, this really touches on a lot of key issues. You know, it's, it's the right to a fair trial. It's the right to privacy. Um, it's even, you know, consumer choice. That's something that we talk about a lot of uh, Young Voices, kind of the program that kind of helped me be on your show today. Um, we have a lot of folks that are concerned with issues of consumer choice. And this is something that has kind of been ebbing and flowing, I think, throughout the past few months. Uh, obviously, we first saw it was still in Mulvaney and Bud Light. We've seen it happen with Target and now Liberty Safe. Obviously, their uh, kind of customer base is a lot smaller than some of these other brands, but so those of us within the gun community, which, you know, estimates vary on how large that community yeah. is, even from organizations like the FBI. But, you know, I think it's about, you know, 30 million Americans, right, I think is kind of the yeah. latest numbers on people that yeah. own AR-15s, you know, 25 to 40 million. Because, again, we don't want really the FBI knowing what that number even is. So these are just estimates. But, you know, even at that number, that's 10% of the U.S. population. So it's still a pretty significant group. And... Like I said, you know, these aren't $30 rocks of Bud Light. These are very significant financial investments yeah, that people have yeah. to think about and talk about. And my husband and I are proud gun owners. And, um, you know, for now, we just have a couple of things. But we're kind of looking to grow that. And, you know, right now we don't have kids. But as if uh, we grow both our gun collection and our family, we're definitely going to be looking into safe storage options. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, you know, that's. That's a conversation that I'm having in my own household, and I think that's mirrored a lot for a lot of other families. Um, you know, especially, like, we talk about just gun ownership in general, right? You know, w- women, especially minority women, are kind of a large-growing demographic of gun owners, and so that kind of brings, yeah. you know, it's often, yeah. like, the question of children being around guns, right? So and that's for sure. these demographical Victoria. shifts change within the gun ownership community, I think the issue is safe storage. Um, is one that is touched on as well, and I think Liberty Safe won't be part of the conversation for a lot of people now. Well, that's amazing. Victoria, thank you for joining us tonight. I find that to be a very fascinating story.